Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host, Sri Ayer. We are in conversation with Test cricketer W. V. Raman, and he is currently commentating in the Women's World Cup, uh, currently happening in New Zealand. And we were talking about his interest in coaching after he finished playing uh, Test cricket and uh, you know first class cricket and so on. So let's uh, invite our guest for the afternoon, uh, W. V. Raman. And the next question, Raman, is that uh, so you went through the course for uh, you know being a coach now there is at that point so there may be like just like you know you have to be selected as a player did you have to go through like a selection process like there were many people who wanted to coach teams there are only a handful of teams i mean we are talking perhaps a pre ipl era kind of walk us through the beginning time when you said that okay i got these certificates and then what happened the idea of getting uh, the certification is primarily to understand what uh, is required of a coach to do when he gets an opportunity. So that is basically the idea. Uh, having done that, what happened was I was lucky because um, Jagmohan Dalmia, the then uh, secretary or board president, BCCI president, uh, was looking for a coach for the Bengal state side. And... Uh, there was an uh, AGM of the BCCI happening around 2000. So he called me and asked me if I would be interested in um, being the coach of the Bengal State side. I said, uh, not a problem at all because um, what is my certification worth if I don't make use of it? Right. So, so he, he immediately said, okay, uh, just come over and uh, take charge of the team. Unfortunately, as uh, it uh, panned out the team did well they qualified for the semi-final after a long gap of eight years it was a very young side uh, Ron Gasco was the captain and uh, even though Saura Ganguly was uh, available during the knockout phase that time it was played on a league come knockout as it is done even now but again there it was from within the zone the league stage happened uh, with the teams within the zone playing against each other uh, so they qualified for the semi-final and then uh, that was the time the National Cricket Academy started as well. Um, the late Raj Singh Dungarpur and uh, late Anuman Singh, uh, they felt that um, I should be uh, looked at seriously uh, to work during the summer camps. And Brijesh Patel, of course, uh, was a director, I think, when it started, or the chairman. Um, he was also of the view that uh, I would be of some use to the budding cricketers. So I did uh, various camps during the summers and that continued. And later on, um, I took up the assignment of uh, being associated with different uh, state sites, uh, Tamil Nadu particularly, that was a stint of four years. Then I did a couple of IPL teams as well. So it's been a, a fulfilling uh, journey because I did uh, teams at different levels and uh, of different sort of verticals as well so which meant that um, i was learning all the time even as i was guiding a, a team i was learning all the time because um, you never cease to learn in life and if you don't have the mentality to learn uh, i think you're just uh, chucking away your life um raman you when you were uh, the coach of Nadu team i think uh, ashun was blossoming as a spinner uh, perhaps Dinesh Karthik and perhaps even Murli Vijay, Abhinav Mukun. Maybe you can just walk us through some of those players. How did you know you feel like they could perhaps you know spark something in them? Because basically they have to go and perform in the field. The coach just says, "Hey, listen, have you tried this?" Or you know, I'm just trying to get into your head a little bit to see how do you you know. Sometimes you know you go for the whole day without a single wicket. And then you have to come back at the end of the day. And then the next day, you have to start all over again. So just walk us through some of those memorable moments as a coach. Dinesh Karthik had played for India by then. When I, oh, I, uh, when I got uh, involved with the Tamil Nadu state side, I think Badri Nath had also played. Uh, maybe he had just uh, played a couple of games or something like that. Uh, but in the case of Ashwin, Murli Vijay, and Abhinav Mukund, they all made their debut when I was a coach of the Tamil Nadu side. In fact, um, interestingly enough, um, 
Now, there was a lot of talk about all three of them prior to them making their debut. There was a lot of talk about them being too young or them being not ready. So, but uh, I had to sort of really um, push hard. Uh, just because, you know, there's always this apprehension in, within the system of getting youngsters into the team. And they always tend to uh, stick to the people who have already played quite a lot. So there comes a time, there's always a first time, as they say in life. So uh, I had to prevail upon uh, the selectors and then try and get them. Of course, there is one cricketer who's still ranting about me for the fact that um, I was not happy with his attitude and uh, our, our decisions had to be taken. But that's part of the game. You don't um, take up charge of a team and take decisions to please uh, anybody and everybody. That's not the job that you're supposed to do. But overall, um, uh, what happened was that um, in the wake of the ICL, uh, a lot of players uh, went away from the system, which meant it had to be a case of really starting from scratch. And uh, by the time I had finished uh, my stint with Tamil Nadu, I had a stretch of four years. By the time I had finished, uh, we had built a very, very good side, a very solid side, which is capable of winning Ranji Trophy almost every second year. But not just that it didn't happen, it didn't mean the team was not a good team. It was a very good team. The fact of the matter is that um, it takes time to build a side, but it needs to be done with proper planning and absolutely without any agenda. That's when you do things uh, as well as you can. Um, all these boys have come along nicely. And that's the uh, biggest uh, satisfaction that you gain if you handle the side and if you put in place uh, some processes or if you've uh, been involved in uh, building up a side. And if you see a lot of um, people really coming along nicely, um, you would obviously reflect uh, uh, upon what you've done with a lot of satisfaction and of course the proof is also there that you've done something worthwhile um, it's not only that Murli Vijay, Ashwin and um, uh, Abhinav Mukhan played for India Balaji also was uh, uh, in a very uh, strange situation then when I took the Tamil Nadu side uh, his back injury sustained uh, during the Pakistan tour uh, was really sort of threatening his career then um, I had to work with him. It is a couple of uh, years of work. And the best thing was that uh, the hard work that he put in, I'm not taking any credit for his comeback, the hard work that he put in, of course, uh, uh, with a little bit of help from me, uh, ensured that um, he didn't go away from the game. He played on for another eight years. Um, he obviously was thrilled with the fact that uh, uh, he played for eight years against the odds when a lot of people, very sort of uh, well-meaning people told him, oh, it's tough, Bala. Or are the back in the It's easy to say that, no? No, you can't do it. No, you argue. Uh, they've given their two bits of wisdom and gone. Uh, they said, ah, I've told him already. It's not possible. So that's, <laughs> that's the kind of nonsense that he went through. But um, full marks to him for uh, really fighting it out and making a comeback and playing for eight years. Now, the best part is that he's got into coaching. He's been guiding a lot of bowlers, uh, which I'm very happy about. There can't be any better candidate than him to be a walking example of what it takes to be a fast bowler and play for a long time. Um, Raman, let's talk about uh, Lakshmipati Balaji. You know, 2003-2004 series in Australia, he played in some matches. But his real coming out was, breaking out was that Pakistan series, especially the test matches. I mean, he was incredibly good. He was really, really good. So when did this injury happen? After the oh, tests and before the ODIs or when did that happen? Sir, in hindsight, uh... We can all be very, very wise, but it, it is something that uh, is very, very difficult to debate now. Uh, but uh, let's be wise in hindsight and say that perhaps it was something that could have been uh, seen earlier itself before it really became a serious injury. But again, the problem is that when a cricket is really doing well, 
nobody will want to go and try and tell him things yeah which is obviously going to knock the moral out of that guy and the player also will not be receptive because the fact of the matter is that he's going to look at you and say what are you talking about i'm feeling fine i'm doing extraordinarily well what are you talking about but the thing was that uh, uh, it was perhaps a case where um, the sports science was in its nascent stage that was the time that cricket was uh, trying to adopt a lot of principles that have helped other sports and uh, that has proved successful in other walks of life uh, being brought into cricket it is just the start maybe uh, if balaji were to have the kind of action that he had and the kind of deeds uh, that he did somebody might have forewarned him when he had a long break of six weeks he might have perhaps uh, seen the merit in it because of the, uh, the fact that the sports science has uh, proved that there are the certain things which can be picked before the events happen and uh, you could uh, resort to uh, taking remedial measures or preventive measures injury prevention um, knowledge is far more now than what it was then but again uh, the important thing was that uh, at least uh, the solace that balaji can take is that even after the injury occurred uh, even though it was the nascent stage of uh, sports science coming into cricket he had the right kind of people to help him in terms of uh, getting his fitness going in the post operation rehab and also the biomechanic uh, specialist helping him out and constantly monitoring what he was doing post his uh, operation and uh, when he got uh, ready to play so along those lines there was at least something in case uh, if we are not to have the help of those specialists the fitness and the uh, biomechanics specialist not helping him out who knows that boy would have just uh, vanished into thin air nobody would have known what uh, or where balaji was by this time who knows because balaji at that time was very keen that he only made a life out of cricket he did not really focus on other things in life but uh, all said and done um, it's a credit overall to all those people who helped him um, the biomechanics specialist the fitness uh, trainer and also the dietitian and also the person who he sought counsel from so it was a team effort and no matter what help he got from uh, wherever he got from at the end of the day it's all his hard work and his phenomenal never say die attitude which has made him you know reap the benefits and and uh, bala if you are watching this video i love your commentary it's uh, that star sports tamil group is so much fun i'm telling you because they are using all these phrases some sound will come in some dialogue will come in i it's just fun watching them it's like you know uh, sitting with all of them and watching that we you don't get confused between uh, lakshmipati balaji and rj balaji no 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 i'm talking about lakshmipati balaji he is <laughs> he is commenting by the way <laughs> i saw him on tv <laughs> and saying in jest <laughs> right 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 rj balaji is funny he said uh, in a t20 match i hope india scores 2000 runs i mean i was just calculating if every ball is a six even then it is difficult <laughs> you know this thing saying as a show okay yes 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 so um back to coaching um when you are approaching coaching a an under 19 team versus say india a team versus the women's team let's first start with the kids because the kids don't know their strength sometimes they are all like hanumans in the making they don't know their strength and uh, they they come and bowl and and but then there is discipline required because you know if you start playing some serious cricket you have to play for 6 uh, 6 hours a day or something like that how do you pace them how do you uh, start the like how do you spot the talent and then perhaps you can take it from there and that is they have tremendous energy they have tremendous enthusiasm now only thing is you don't sort of stifle it as a coach and you also don't try to impress them by telling them all that you know mm. just say what is required be economical with what you're suggesting to them because at that age they have to do make mistakes suffer and then learn now the important thing for coaches to understand is experience is something which cannot be bought it is something that's gained by doing certain things repeatedly over a period of time 
and the thing about experience is that it's a very very harsh teacher it punishes you first and then teaches you the lesson so you have to make the boys evolve themselves discover themselves you should not be downloading it's 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 not like uh, the other aspects of life because in sport it's all about at least in cricket it's all about doing if you try and download too many things into a kid's head now there will be a conflict of the mind and the body now when that happens the coordinated movement between the body and the mind will not happen so try and clear the cobwebs if possible try and remove the apprehensions if the kid has any apprehensions or try and you know see if you can address any insecurities that the kids may have and also be tolerant to their indifferent attitude always think about how you were when you were 17 18 yes 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 don't, um don't try and you know sort of put up a set of guidelines and say this is how i want you to be you're not their father you're after all a coach so so for kids coming through the ranks uh, typically they all have a hard schedule right they have to get up at five o'clock be at the ground by six by the time sun rises go through the thing because they still have a full day of school and things like that just walk us through how the youngsters scene is today in chennai a typical situation i'm, I'm just curious no more than anything else what kind of regimen these kids have to follow five days a week seven days a week practice one game no, I, I can't be you know uh, giving you the entire rundown primarily because i'm not really in touch with that part of mm -hmm. life because I've never had an academy of my own. I've never, you know, sort of um, resorted to coaching beginners. Uh, I've been uh, sort of part of uh, elite teams where they have, you know, reached a certain stage. Understood, uh, understood. Doing uh, whatever they had to do in their formative years. But here, the only thing that I would like to say in as much as I would uh, want uh, to be as lenient as possible or as supportive as possible, because I also happen to be a parent, uh, if they have chosen to do that, there's no excuse because it's something that they have chosen. You not forced it on them. So they cannot use that as an excuse of saying, I'll have to get up at five, I'll have to do this, I'll have to do that. You are chosen. If you make up the bed, you lie on it. There's no excuse, at least on that front, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, see, the thing uh, about, uh, you know, taking up sports or some of these professions is, if you take up engineering, chances are after four years or something like that, you get a degree. Whereas if this is 5,000 people going into the system. Very few make it to a place where they wanted to go. So, and, and all these 5,000 are putting in a lot of effort. I mean, see, if you go in the morning anywhere in any of the cities, uh, Ravan, you will see that ubiquitous cricket kit bag with the handle sticking out. You know this guy is coming back from a practice or going to a practice. Actually, the problem there is out of the 5,000 numbers that you are giving me, I would be surprised if 200 cases is what the genuine interest is emanating from the boys themselves. Because what is happening is a lot of parents are more ambitious for their sons and daughters than the kids themselves are for themselves. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a statistic, uh, which I looked into when I was briefly the head of the Tamil Nadu Academy. 80% um, of the boys who go into a coaching camp at the age of 7, 8, they drop out from cricket at the age of 14. Hmm. Now, it, 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 it was a funny situation in China. A lot of kid, uh, parents would come to me and say, Hey, W, my son here, he's very interested. He knows all the statistics. He's very keen on cricket. Which academy to send him? So my question would be as to how old is he? A seven or eight. I would casually say, let him play with his friends with the tennis ball next five, six years. Unlike tennis, cricket is not a game where you have to really send somebody to a camp as soon as the kid learns to crawl. There's enough time. So this used to be my standard response and it uh, the word spread around and it came to a situation where parents started uh, telling each other, don't go to that idiot, he has the same piece of advice. So no point talking to him. He would, he would perhaps, you know, get his advice right, you know, when we have grandchildren. But the reason why I say that was on the one hand, the kids at 14 would be sort of courageous enough to tell their parents, no, 
is not happening i am not interested okay the other part of it is between 7 and 14 is the time they develop a lot of motor skills they become stronger but in this period if somebody gets hit on the head even if it's not something really serious the fear the psychological fear that goes in and stays in the head of the kid is something nobody is going to get rid of the other thing is that you don't have the proper gear for them and on the cricketing technical side if you make a 10 year old kid bowl from a distance of 22 yards the ball may not reach so you might try to chuck now that's again it's not good for his cricket there are a lot of disadvantages in that yes organize a game of cricket and with different set of rules let them enjoy the company let them play yes activities are fine the structured coaching far too soon is not the right thing as far as i'm concerned because uh, now everybody is going to be playing the same way now that's not they're not uh, fmcg products in a batch of production are they to be the uniform <laughs> you have to allow them to develop their own style develop their own perception develop their own mindsets develop their own skills yes after which what you try and do is you try and say okay boss this is what it is uh, viewers we are in conversation with uh, ex test cricketer and coach uh, wv raman we'll be back again uh, with part three where we talk about some other aspects of coaching as well as some real life experiences of uh, wv raman so stay tuned